a DAW or DAW which stands for Digital Audio Workstation is an electronic device or application software used for recording, editing and producing audio files. Cakewalk by BandLab is one of the best software DAWs that you can get now, that too for free. Apart from its capabilities that are on par with the other paid DAWs, what makes Cakewalk a pretty great choice is its growing community where you can clarify your doubts on the software. I'll link all the ones I know in the description. There is even an official feedback loop page where you can request for features that you wish to see in Cakewalk. And Cakewalk does get updates very often. By the way, this video is the first one in a tutorial series geared towards extreme beginners. If you don't know anything about Cakewalk, or even music production, you will probably find this series really useful. Let's get to the installation. First, we will have to go to this web page, which will be linked in the description. And then we can just click on this download button to take us way down to the real download link. Let's click on it. And that is going to download the BandLab Assistant application, which is a small application, which in turn is going to install and authenticate our copy of Cakewalk. So we have downloaded it. Now we can open it. And that is going to automatically install the application into our PC. We can close the browser. If it doesn't install automatically, then right click on it and run it as administrator. After it gets installed, it will also open up on its own. If you don't have an account, you sign up. I already have one, so I'm going to log in. Since I was already logged in the browser, I didn't have to enter my username and password. So now we are logged into the BandLab Assistant application. In here, we go to this apps section where we can see this Cakewalk by BandLab. Now what we have to do is press this install. Now this is the window in which we can select which all add-ons we want to install along with Cakewalk. Now keep in mind, these are not at all necessary for the proper functioning of Cakewalk, except for maybe Melody. It can do some conversions that might benefit depending on the application. Other than that, we have Studio Instruments Suite, which contains five instrument plugins. If you don't know what instrument plugins are, they produce sound. In addition to these, we will be installing more plugins in the next video. Then Drum Replacer, I haven't used it, although I think it might be useful for people who live record the drums or those who intend to use Cakewalk for mixing purposes. And then Melodyne I already told. The thing is, the Melodyne that comes with Cakewalk isn't an activated version. Until we activate it, it will work in Cakewalk as Melodyne Player, with which we cannot edit anything. If you don't know what Melodyne is, it's a pitch correcting software mainly used for correcting the pitch of vocals. Then we have Theme Editor, which is, uh, of course, its name says Theme Editor. If you are into editing themes for Cakewalk, you can download it. I don't spend any time in that, so I usually don't install this one. But for the sake of a tutorial video, I'm going to install all of this. Now let me repeat myself. These are not crucial for the proper functioning of Cakewalk. So if you're running low on storage or internet data, you don't have to include these. And also, you can come back to this BandLab application and install these add-ons maybe in a later time. Now let's continue pressing install. As you can see, the number says 0 by 5, which means one Cakewalk by BandLab and four add-ons. It's gonna take some time depending on the speed of your network. In the meantime, you have one important thing to do. Go get some water and drink. Stay hydrated. After all the downloading has been done, you will get a smart window like this, in which you will have to press yes. In fact, you will get this multiple number of times during which you will have to press that yes button. Okay. Now this is for Cakewalk installation. English is the language I want, so select that and press OK. Of course we cannot move on without accepting the agreement. Read this if you are into it. Press next. Instead of choosing basic, I'm going advanced because I would like to choose where all these things are getting installed. And then press next. This is probably going to be the start menu. Yes it is. This is the program's shortcut in the following start menu folder. Okay, this is fine. Next. Then setup will install Cakewalk by BandLab into the following folder. Since I don't like installing my stuff in C drive, I'm going to change it to D drive. Press next. 
Select the location where audio plugins, MIDI plugins, soft synth and utilities will be installed. Of course that is also going to be D. This is the same subfolder as before. The same location, these two. Next, this is VST folder location. I'm going to change the folder location because for one, this is not the preferred location for my VSTs and two, I would like to keep the plugins that come with Cakewalk and the plugins that I will be installing in the future separate from each other. If you don't know what VSTs are, I will be explaining that in the next video of this series. So now it's the same Cakewalk subfolder. Next, application content files. These are files that can improve the speed and efficiency of our workflow in Cakewalk. In this case, we have to browse to change the location because of the nature of these files that they can be created and collected from various internet forums, they are kept outside the main Cakewalk subfolder. Alright, next, this is the association of file types, keep everything checked. Next, create desktop icon, of course, why not? Next. Finally, here you can check if the folder locations are right, if not go back and change. In this case, let's move forward. Then leave it there for the installation to complete. And with this, Cakewalk by BandLab is completely installed in our PC. When we press finish, we will be asked to continue the installation of the add-ons that we selected before. Just click yes when asked and wait for the installation to complete. We don't have to give any input until we reach the installation of Melodyne. When we reach there, we get this window. Language, English, US. Next. Again, next. Accept so that we can move on. Mm, I don't want the 32-bit version, I only want the 64-bit. Next. Okay, this is where we choose the VST2 destination location. Since I trade Melodyne as one among the other external VST plugins, the VST folder location that I will be choosing for Melodyne will be the one I would choose for the other external VST plugins. Next. And install. Then let it complete the installation. Finish. Now the installation of the theme editor will begin and let this one also complete itself. That's it. We have successfully installed Cakewalk by BandLab which can either be opened from here or by double clicking on this desktop icon. You might get this same copy window while you open Cakewalk for the first time. Let it do its thing. And when it finishes loading, this is what you will probably see. This window is going to take us through one of the most basic preference settings in a DAW. Keep in mind, we can actually change these settings from the usual preferences window in a later time if we need to. Click on next. Let's set up the audio. What I am really interested in here is this advanced drop down. Here we can choose the driver mode. Oh, and by the way, I don't have any interface or dedicated sound card. If you do have anything like that, then you will probably know which one to choose. If you don't have anything like that, then BandLab recommends using one of the Wasapi driver mods. I'm gonna choose Wasapi Shared. Let's see how it goes. Next, we choose the sample rate. The two standards are 48,000 Hz or 48 kHz and 4400 Hz or 44.1 kHz. 48kHz is mostly used in film production, for example in case of background score for movies. And 44.1 is what's usually used for songs. And that's what we are selecting. Bit depth is 24, that's what we want. Next, MIDI setup. Now you won't see this window if you don't have a MIDI controller already plugged into your PC. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, don't worry about it, it just makes the process easier by a little bit. And if you do have one, we will be setting it up in a later video. Let me enable my MIDI keyboard. This is the port in which it's connected. Next, selecting the workspace mainly changes the control bar for now. Yeah, this section is called the control bar. If we do want to change it later, we can actually do it from here. For now, let's stick with basics since we are just starting out. Next. I want to help improve Cakewalk, 
So enabling this and done. Now this window is called the start screen. I'm gonna close this window so that I can show you where you can open the get started window just in case if you need to. It's from help and get started. Alright, close. Closing the start screen again so that I can show you where to open this start screen itself. It's under file, start screen. Now what is a start screen? It presents us with templates with which we can open new projects with. Then here we can see the projects that we recently closed. Existing projects will open up the project folder location itself. And demo projects will include demo projects. Okay, let's open up a new project. Empty project. This is the workspace UI of Cakewalk. One thing I want to tell you is to make use of this help module. It will describe whatever you have under your mouse. For instance, now it's describing this area which is the clips pane. And now it's describing this area which is the tracks pane. So make sure you make good use of it. But I'm gonna close it to get more screen real estate in my lower resolution screen and also because at this point, I don't need it. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we will see how we can add external VST plugins and audio samples into Cakewalk. Just so you know, it also involves setting up some preferences. This is ADK, hoping to see you in the next video.